Good evening all, Ira Epstein of Linder & Associates with your financial market Spider ETF wrap up and this is for Thursday evening the 27th of August 2020. All right, big day today, the Fed change of policy they say. It's nice that they changed it. Uh, they're going to focus more on the unemployment issue since uh, they're not even sure that 3.5% now is a full employment number. But wherever the number is, the real number is right now, it's too high. And the Fed has decided that they're going to look at inflation instead of a target of 2%, they're going to look at an average number of inflation and let it get hotter rather than cooler before they'd step in, which is a way of saying they're not stepping back into the interest interest rate market anytime soon. Yet interest rates, the real rates, continue to climb ever so slowly right here. Is that a pickup of the economy? Maybe. If you look at the economic numbers, they're nothing but stellar. The Abbott Laboratories deal today is huge. Now, there are events that we get that are big. You know, I realize how many companies around the world are trying to break, get a breakthrough in the vaccine and treatments for COVID, but this is a breakthrough. Abbott has come out in laboratories with a test that costs $5, that you take it on the spot, and within 15 minutes, you get your reading. Now, can you imagine if you're boarding for an airplane, you're able to take this, and now you know everybody on that plane with you does not have the disease. That changes air travel. Let's talk about carrying that further, going into a restaurant, a movie theater, a, a cruise ship. I can go on and on and on. It, it, the list just keeps going. And how often can you take the test? I imagine you can take it every day at $5. Uh, if you get off the ship and you come back, who knows? I, you know, I, I, I haven't thought it all through, but I certainly know that those people I'd get on the airplane with, I'd feel a lot more comfortable with, and I think that's gonna change things. Movie theaters, this will change. Restaurants, it might be just what they need so they can let people in. I don't know enough about it, but it's the breakthrough, and the market liked what it saw all the way through today. So that was it. So those were the two combinations. As for the Fed inflation thing, folks, we haven't hit an inflation target of the Feds in a decade. So I, I still find it nonsense that we're talking, oh, uh, that uh, Mr. Bullard and others going, well, if we hit two and a quarter, two and a half percent, I'd consider that still okay and moderate. You haven't been able to get to two percent. What can I say? When we look at the tech stocks, they're the darlings, all the fangs, you know that. You've got your breakaway, your runaway, you haven't finished it. We'll see if we get an exhaustion gap one of these days or if we fill some of these gaps. But right now, I give it credit. Two days in a row, I spotted that and I feel good about it. When we take a look at the swing line, the trend is up. You've got higher lows, higher highs. You're staying over the 18-day average of closes, which I call the line in the sand. So that's bullish, and all the averages are lined up super bullish. The short term over the 100, the 100 over the 200, and they've been this way forever. You know what, I'm teasing about that, but you know what I'm saying. As for getting over and staying over the upper bowl in Japan, no problem. You're two days in a row over it. You won't stay over it much more. You'll find a way to pull back. That's what's been the tradition of the market, and that's how the algorithm works. Do I think traders should be buying over a Bollinger Band? Let me make this clear. Listen to this. N-E-V-E-R. Never. Generally, the market lets you come in at a price where you're not over that band. That's what I'm saying. I'm not saying you're going to get a better price. Buying over the band, you tell me if you've done well doing that through here. Not saying there can't be an instance where it won't work. I don't want to play for that instance. Um, so I look at this, and this is the key to me. When you have an embedded reading, it means that momentum has locked in. And it locked in bullish, or if it's under 20 going sideways, locked in bearish. Until it's broken, and traders don't get this, they use the word high. There is no such thing as high. The question is, is there enough play on the brakes where you want to play to get back up to the Bollinger Band? That's a different word than high. That's how I read it. SMH, I told you, it's not acting well with XLK. The conductor, semiconductor index is not the XLK. And you can see it ran to the Bollinger Band the past three days and bang, comes down today. Didn't quite get to the 18-day average. It could, and it's an overbought market. Is it trending? No. You've got a lower and low, higher high, and you're caught between the 18-day average and the upper Bollinger Band. 
And that doesn't mean these markets aren't gradually working higher. None of them are under the 18-day average, right? So the, I, I'm not blind. I see that they're working higher, but they're difficult when the other markets are easy to trade with the embedded reading and they're offering you an easier path to higher prices. That's part of what charting is. Throw the name off the chart. If the pattern's not there, why are you buying it? Do you really know that much about the fundamentals? Maybe you do, but I don't. Um, and the XLI, you're trying to get this embedded reading. So they're both not, numbers are not over 80. They're still overbought. Trend up, if it rallies, I look for pretty stiff resistance at 79.69. Take out 77.20 and you step out of this uptrend. And XLE, real problems here in the sideways action of the market. You know I've been telling you the futures market, the action is identical to this in the Brent and the WTI. These are the hardest patterns in the world to trade. And I learned the hard way. I have gray hair for a reason. You're looking for the breakouts and you're telling your clients as a, as a broker, well, I think it's going to break out to the upside. Then it pulls back. You get stopped out because it's not going. Then it comes down. You're going short and then it breaks out the other way. If you learn to read the Bollinger Bands and you understand that when you stay in them, you got a problem, admit that. There's other patterns to trade. And that's what charting is. Charting is patterns. QQQ bullish. Embedded reading. Hits the band. Backs off been letting traders take a stab at the long side and then goes back to the band. When the pattern ends, it ends, and it will end. It ended here for a while, and you went back to the 18-day average. It ended here for a while, uh, it ended here. And each time it's gone back to that 18-day average and basically has held that number. Emerging markets are just not ready to come out of this pattern yet. Uh, they're overbought, you got a higher high, lower low, I wait. I, I like the idea of them. Because I think that U.S. stocks, you know, all sees rise to the highest point level, right? So as you're going to get there, everything else comes up eventually. GLD, tell me where the market stopped. This is how you came in. You had made yesterday a higher high. You have a lower low. The resistance point, the way I tell you here, look for the 18-day average. I call it the line in the sand to be a problem. You're oversold. Market goes up today. Uh, hits a high of 185.17. The 18-day average, 185, and like a rock, it stops right at that number. Just not ready, okay? When it's not ready, not worried about it. GDX did the same thing. You went back to the 18-day average, came down. You're not trending in these markets, up or down. You're not trending. TLT, lower highs, lower lows. As much as the Fed has our back, are you noticing that we're, these, this represents interest rates going up? Now you're very oversold. You haven't hit a Bollinger Band, but I'm thinking that if you can get to it, I look for the short covering to come in the market. FXE, no trend. The market tried the upside, failed, took out the low here. Prior to this, I thought if the market can get over 111.58, told people that as long as you don't break back under that low, you got a shot after the Fed talks, maybe it can go. You tried the upside afterwards and failed and came back down. Okay, you lose 60 cents, you take another look at the marketplace. Nothing wrong with taking a look, having control under your belt, and away you go with it. If you think every trade you're going to make is going to work, forget it. It's when you lose dollars, not cents, that you got to start getting very, very concerned than spiders and ETFs. And that's the name of the game. If you're an options trader, you learn that real fast. Uh, your option strategies, uh, are you going to be time? Are you going to be time decay? Uh, I can go on and on and on. But I cover all that every afternoon at about 4 o'clock. When the markets close, I go through all this with my trade ideas. And I cover a slew of markets now. It's actually, I think we're up to 36 charts now. I'd have to count again. But it's technical analysis, fundamentals. So I've already told my traders the reports that are coming out tomorrow, what the estimates are on them, what the trade's focusing on, so they get that part. And maybe those are the things you need to get yourself set up. I cover all these markets plus BETZ because online betting, I, I like the whole concept of that, and uh, it's done very well in this environment. It's new. 
and new being the ETF is relatively new, so tracking it is fun, and I'm, I'm doing that certainly. But you get these slew of different markets, plus I'll throw a daily chart in with a weekly chart, and on the weekend, all of my subscriptions get a weekend edition, where all I do is look at longer-term trades for you. During the week, I'm a short-term trader. A swing trader might be the right name. On the weekend, I'm a long-term trader. $8.95 for 30 days. Just more than a big Starbucks drink, right? Not much more. That drink's gone in 15 minutes. This is gonna be 30 days worth of this. So that's what you get. How do you sign up? Go to our website under the word research. It's all waiting for you. Read about it. It's right there. You sign up there. I'm I. Repstein. You have a great day. I'll talk to you all tomorrow.